So voice stacks, what are voice stacks? And before I explain what voice stacks are, I maybe also explain what polyphony is inside Bitwig Studio and how it works. So we have this whole complex of uh, voices in just in one video. So when you select an instrument, you have in the top left corner here in the inspector, you have some options for voices and voice stacking. And you also have a display for active voices. So um, at the moment, the synthesizer is monophonic mode, so you can only play one voice. You can also change this here by clicking and dragging and can increase the possible voices. You can see here down below, we have active voices zero from, uh, from five possible voices. So back to mono. And in monophonic mode, you can only play one voice or one note at a time. And you also have there an option between true and diggy mode. The true mode here is basically exactly one voice. And this reflects basically in how certain envelopes behave. And I'll show you this in a minute. And there's a diggy mode here where you alternate between two voices. There's only one voice active, but it's, you know, you're alternating between these two. And this also has an effect on envelopes. And I'll show you this in a minute. So we have true mode here active and we have a slow envelope for filter and amplitude, right? So this is how it sounds. You can hear the note or the sound slowly fades in. And then it slowly fades out. So now when you, when you start and implement your second note while the other note is playing, while in monophonic mode where only one voice can be active, um, you guess probably what happens. We play this note and then this note comes in, this note comes in, and then this note stops from playing and this note takes over. But there's a difference in Diggy and True how this behaves. So watch, just, just listen to it. Can you hear it? It slowly fades in here, but when we play this note, we basically take the current state of the envelope of the amplitude and the filter and just switch the pitch without actually re-triggering the envelope because there's only one voice. So because we have one voice, this envelope is still active and this, uh, this amplitude here envelope is also still active. We just take it over and clone it over to the second note. So the only thing that changes within the voice is the pitch. Everything else there stays the same. So sometimes this is not what you want. You want to re-trigger your envelope when a no new note comes in. So this is where you switch to Diggy mode. So listen to this. Okay, so it's the same behavior. We still play just only one voice. But when you switch from this note to this note, we re-trigger the envelope, the filter envelope and the amplitude envelope because we switching to a second voice and disabling the first voice. This is basically uh, the Diggy mode where we have two voices or alternating between two voices. And as also says here the description, monophonic playback with two alternating voices. Envelopes will always re-trigger from zero and note input is required to make each voice sound. So um, this is the two different modes between true and diggy. And when you switch it to polyphonic mode, of course, this goes away. And now we are able to play two voices at the same time because we dialed in your two voices. You can see we have two voices active here from two possible voices. So when we paint in the third note here, of course, the first note will be disabled and the third note takes over. Okay, to make all three uh, notes playing at the same time, you have, of course, to increase the voices to three. Okay, this is basically how polyphony works in Bitwig Studio across all instruments. You can go up here to 
um, let's say 64 voices at the same time. This of course um, uses a lot of CPU, so be aware of that. And you can also change here basically how much CPU you want to spend on um, your polyphony because sometimes you press a lot of chords and then you can save CPU by just going down in voices, possible voices, and then disabling automatically all the uh, notes while playing new notes. Okay, so back here to uh, maybe three polyphony voices. So now the interesting part is with the whole modulation system of Metric Studio, you can add here a random modulator and this one is polyphonic that's why it says your po uh, poly and when we now modulate here something like the cutoff it basically says that every note you play at the same time gets a different random modulation from this modulator and you can see this reflect here in dots that uh, that show up here Each note is basically a dot here and this dot shows what modulation each voice gets from this random mod. This is basically um, a nice way of bringing in a lot of movement, a lot of um, yeah, modulation to your sound by just using a polyphonic uh, modulator in Bitwig Studio on multiple voices. And you can also watch always here this active voices how many voices are currently active uh, by Bitwig Studio. So if you have a long release time here, everywhere, then it takes a lot of time before the voice gets um, disabled or deactivated because as long as there is a sound on this voice uh, active, um, Bitwig leaves this basically on. <laughs> You can see it's still active here. It takes a while. Then after a while it gets um, disabled. And it all depends on your um, on your release setting here. As you can see when you pull this up, um, it gets instantly disabled. Um, okay, so this is how this works. Now to voice stacking. What is voice stacking? Voice stacking is basically that you increase the voices on each voice itself. So when we increase here, maybe this to four, means this voice plays this patch four times at the same time. So uh, we basically multiply all these notes here by four because we increase the voice stacks by four. And this looks like this. So here we play two notes at the same time with voice stacks off. We increase the voice stacking to five. And we play for each of these voices five stacks. So to recap this, we have here three notes. We have the synth here in uh, polyphonic mode with three voices. We can play this. You can see we have three voices active from three possible voices. And then we also can increase voice stacking here by two, three, four, five. And you can see we have now three times five stacks each on each note. So five here, five here, and five here, okay? So we have basically 15 of these polysynths playing at the same time. And the, prob the only problem is that each of these polysynths basically plays the same sound. So this is where the voice stack modulator comes in on your or your polyphonic uh, modulators comes in because with the voice stack modulator here, you can say, well, I want to change stack one to maybe that the cutoff is open and stack two maybe i want to have it all the way to the right hand the third voice or the third stack is on the left side right something like this this is something i can do to make basically 
a difference between each stack to make it kind of unique to um, um, to to all the other stacks basically to distinguish these stacks. And um, yeah, this is why the why the voice stack modulator is basically very handy for that. And you have also your global mode. Instead of using each of these modulator handle outputs here to modulate something, you can just say, well, I use the global modulator here. And the mode is here minus one to plus one, which is basically a bipolar mode. And you can modulate, for instance, with this here, the panning on the right side. So you modulate this by one. And what we now did is basically we uh, modulated stack one to minus one, which is on the left side. Stack two is minus 15, uh, which is halfway to the left side. Uh, the third voice sticks on the middle position. The fourth is on the right, so slightly to the right, and five is all the way to the right. This is what you can do just with one modulator handle and this mode minus one to plus one. So you spread basically the modulation um, um, through, uh, in the in the panning and uh, across all these uh, voice stacks or stacks. And this is basically true for all each, for each voice stacks here on these notes. So um, this one does basically the same as this and this and this. So um, yeah, to distinguish between these notes, also you have to use polyphonic uh, modulators. So the easiest modulator would be the random modulator because it creates a different seed for each note automatically. So we go to Hertz, we go to polyphonic mode and we can modulate stuff here. You can see when we hit play now, we have a lot of dots here representing the voices. These are basically 15 dots because we have for each voice, for each voice, and for each of these stacks, for each voices, a different seed, modulation seed. So you modulate basically all the stacks and all the voices at the same time differently with the cutoff. If you want to be a bit more specific, then you can use uh, the channels. So we can select your, uh, a note and say this is maybe uh, channel two, this is channel 3, then you can use here the channel 16 modulator and then you can target here um, different parts of the polysynth. Maybe you want for channel 2, which is the second note here, you want to have the cutoff open. But when you open up the cutoff here, you also open up the cutoff on each of these stacks of this note, right? So. To target this, you probably have to insert here another voice stack modulator and switch this to manual mode. In manual mode, you can decide how, how much modulation amount you want to change for each of these stacks. So you can say, I want to have on stack three, um, on all of these nodes, cut off open, but then you use channel two here and increase only this this part, right? So it only opens up basically the cutoff on this node and of on all of these stacks of this node. Okay, so you have to think in multiple di dimensions. It's it gets a bit complicated, but but you get the idea how all this uh, is all this relates to each other. Then it makes more sense. Um, so you can be really specific um, sometimes with this channel sixteen here and dial in. For this note and only for this voice deck on a, on a specific voice deck something with this manual mode here and um, yeah using multiple channels for these keys so this is also possible just to show you this that that you can do this if you want to and it's also not a problem to use multiple of these voice deck modulators in different modes there's also value mode here minus one to plus one um, so you can use multiple of these voice stack modulators and modulate different things differently. So when I showed you here with the minus one to plus one modulating basically left to right, a bipolar, mo a bipolar parameter here, uh, and you want to modulate, for instance, here the mix, the oscillator one to two, then this makes no sense here, right? Because negative would be go into below zero here. So we need an... Uh, unipolar modulator here so we can switch to the second one and say this one here is in the mode 
uh, 0 to 1, which is a unipolar modulation. And here you can use this and spread it across all voice decks evenly. So no problem to use multiple voice deck modulators. I hope this is clear. Maybe I make some refinements to this video in the future when people ask certain questions. But for now, I think that's the best explanation I can give you. And before I close down this video, I want to tell you that you can use voice grids not only on uh, instruments of Bitwig Studio, you can use it also on the note grid. And I have a lot of tutorials on my main channel how to utilize this. Uh, also, the newest clap version inside Bitwig Studio here with the search um, XT clap plugin. You can also use voice text here, as you can see on the left side. And also, FX Grid uh, in Bitwig Studio also uses voice stacking. So, you can create interesting voice effects, reverbs, um, chorus, delays, etc. So, a lot of stuff. It's also on my main channel. I Put the link in the description below so you can uh, see some practical examples of all of this.